Hi guys, good afternoon. It's actually Saturday rather than a Sunday, uh, but I've got a busy day or couple of days uh, ahead. Um, it's my brother's birthday today, so we've got a family barbecue tomorrow. Hopefully the weather holds up uh, a bit. And uh, it's uh, my good friend Connell's birthday today. So happy birthday, Connell, you little musker. Um, but I thought I'd do it now, you know, while we've, uh, when I've got the chance. So, you know, this time in, in 24 and a bit hours, uh, there could be some more developments. So just bear that in mind when watching this. Uh, the last couple of weekend stops, stocks have been um, negatively priced over the two days, the Saturday and the Sunday, which has led to a gap down. I reckon we see the same thing, to be honest. Um, I think one, one thing of note, which is quite interesting, which I don't think the press has really taken much note of is the story with uh, uh, the that uh, in the sewers in Barcelona last year supposedly they found traces of, of the virus so could we that we're actually on the second wave now for me that would be bullish you know the fact that we've lived with this you know albeit on a, a smaller scale already uh, and and been able to get through it might be that uh, if that was to gather momentum we see some but anyway as we come back on the Monday worth uh, just saying that you've only got a couple of days before it's the beginning of July. So a lot of the month end rebalancing, quarter two rebalancing has, has been done uh, on that end of the week. So let's just have a quick run through um, of each market, of how we finish the week. And uh, as usual, we'll, we'll carry on to develop some new levels if there are any for the week. But as, uh, as we go into the new month, I've just encouraged you all to you know, put it onto a monthly um, monthly candle or however you look at your charts just to get that data how did we finish the month what are the you know the the longer term investors looking at uh, euro yesterday uh, yesterday week last week Monday we, we hit well Friday we hit this level Monday great reaction Tuesday great reaction I remember speaking to our traders thinking is this gonna be the level where you look back in hindsight and it's just so easy to get long um, and then we, we are off to the races, but it got above the, you know, that, that uh, choppy line in the sand. Um, and then I had the Wednesday and Thursday off and when we came back lower, uh, it seems that stocks, you know, took a, a downturn. Maybe it's just a bit of end, end of month rebalancing because I, 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 I put the question out on, on, the, on the Thursday or the Wednesday. Is there anything new for this sell off? And there wasn't really wasn't really. I think it's worth keeping an eye on the polls. Biden's getting a big lead uh, and the numbers in the US are accelerating massively. But unless they're going to, you know, shut down, you know, I, I think we still overall going to move higher. Um, interstate quarantine or, or whatever that got announced is, is bearish, I guess. You know, that's something to, to think about. But overall, I don't think there was major developments last week to be completely honest but the, the dollar caught a beard on the last couple of days but on Friday you can see it was relatively unchanged so looking at the euro sorry I feel waffling on a bit uh, I would still have this line in the sand I think it's important you know it's just as a guide really so I think at the moment you know you have to say bears are in control but I'd be a buyer above that sort of 112.82 level targeting up towards these highs again um, that we got from the 16th and then the 23rd. I mean, the long from here, you, you are going to de-risk around this area, aren't you? Um, before we would have got to the, the high that we had. What's that on the the, um, the sort of 10th of June? Um, however, you know, looking at this move, you know, it might be we have to come back up, find a bit of resistance to come back down, and then we are looking at the double bottom, which is a massive area. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable being bullish if we do close the day below there. Um, however, we have got a big area support just below as well. So, you know, for the for the for the bears, if you're watching this, and you, you know, you may well already be in a nice position. I think the the daily close has to come between both of those levels um, as well, and and even then, de-risk as it as it comes down. I really like the long from here. Um, however, if I was long, and I, I I do regret not being in it, and I would have de-risked and held. You know, as long as this level holds, it could be the, the second bite of the cherry is to come from that 112 handle. So, yeah, keep a watch on that for, for the euro. Um, 
that longer term trend line that people were looking at on the, the weekly as well. You can see if I just draw this uh, quickly on where is it? Yes, making sure I get the right one. You see that there, one test, two test, three test. Might be that the main, you know, we've just seen the opposite of the, the push higher from the trend line we had down the bottom. You know, it might be that uh, we just need to come all the way back down. Something to, to bear in mind as well. Certainly that longer time frame, you can see the importance of that. So are we just getting squeezed both ways? Um, you know, for, for the bears, a close below the 112 on the day, then I think you can get a, a move back down to the 110 handle, give or take a, a few a few pips either way. The pound um, last week, you can see we, tricky one, wasn't it? You know, you got that, if you're purely looking for the trade of the trend line, um, it would have it would have been a hard one. You would have, you know, the, the retest, it got up then above this area on the close of the day, you might have maybe fancied the short and, and got stopped, or the fact that we go, got in above here for the long uh, choppy choppy I think you know a lot of people may well got cut up on that pound looking at the sort of the daily closes it then was it, it was nice to trade I should say Wednesday Thursday Friday a lot easier and it's almost like we had a false break of this level it came then back and that resistance level was so key for the push lower we made a new low for the week but interestingly uh, we, we closed right on that low that we had on the 22nd. So uh, the levels to the downside that I talked about last Sunday, I would still have on. You know, they're very key. Now for that trend line, it's not good enough anymore. So that, that gets removed. The 124.67 I would have on because it is the high that we had, uh, three pips high, albeit on, on Thursday. So I'd have that. And then, you know, this area comes more of a zone towards the high from Wednesday. Uh, and then you are still looking at uh, the 126, the 200 day moving average as well. It, it does get that, you know, feeling that we are drifting down. Um, you know, I've, I've got this zone marked up here at 122.65. You, you, from the way we finished the week, you've got to imagine that comes in on Monday, but headlines can change. You know, it's uh, Brexit starting to get mentions again and one newspaper headline on a Sunday gaps us higher or, or, or lower so just uh, just be careful in that where would I be be long now you know where would I be late to the party above 125.46 for me I think is good enough uh, at the moment the shorts I'd be be selling on uh, on pops higher I would say Aussie uh, correlated as we know to the S&P and uh, we did have a big down day on the on the Wednesday and, and then we came lower as well with a bit of dollar strength on the Friday as well for me it's you know looking at that it's, it is choppy super choppy 69.33 I'm still having on because we can't get a close above so maybe when we do if we do uh, you know we get a cleaner move up to, to those highs from the 17th and 23rd before getting the high of the year uh, looks like we're starting to develop a bit of a trend so worth worth having a look worth having a look just to see how that holds up for, for sure and you know the, the way it closed for me I mean looking at that and having looked at the euro and the pound I know which against the dollar I know which markets I prefer to be looking at and I think that's important you know when doing your analysis if it's you know bang in the middle of the range choppy market you know, there's no need to to get stuck in to that when there's other better alternatives so I'd, I'd be really waiting, you know, looking at this, if you give me a long opportunity down here on the 200 day moving average this high, I'm taking it all day of the week with the current outlook. So yeah, I wouldn't mind that. To, to the upside, you know, it is starting to look like we are just getting squeezed, right? Something like that worth having on. So a break either way could be could be the play there. So just bear that in mind if we do break higher or lower from those trend lines, um, then uh, could get a decent move. Moving on to uh, equities. And I had these on 60 minute. Look at this, an arrow that worked uh, as a trend line. Obviously, absolutely no reason why that would have happened, to be honest, but let's just have a look at the the daily chart here. Obviously, the futures giving that uh, 
that closed on the 19th for us to then open it. It's the 22nd. Just a bit weird, really, wasn't it? Um, but finishing the lowest we finished or closed since, uh, well, yeah, going back to the 11th, really. So, yeah, we... We're, we're, we're coming to a big area, I have to say, where the, the Bulls need to defend. Need to depend, defend 29-63. They really do. Um, that gap, 40-point gap, 40-point gap, maybe, if we have some ultra-bad developments. Uh, for me, it looks, it looks like a good place to get long, I have to say. I have to say. And the last two Mondays have been led to some some dip buying this uh this week um was a down week and that doesn't look too good but having a look here on on that weekly time frame you can see it is a, a fairly well respected area so for me it's, it's it's so key isn't it it is so key you know the bulls need it need it above 2963 uh and the bears would would love it below and, and if it does get below i think AE 2847 comes in before 2760 where I'm still a bit long from so hopefully we don't have to be doing a Sunday briefing where I'm talking about the market below 2760 because I won't be too happy um, but you know there could well be the opportunity to, to add to this position on developments uh, as well, but it's not a good picture, you know. For you know, the, each each afternoon, the the numbers coming out of Florida, etc., are, are proving. Well, the market reaction is proving there is still jitters around. So uh, we we we're awaiting the next positive equity development for for the next long. It seems and uh, could come in twenty nine sixty three. But watch out for those weekend developments uh, as if we do end up below just be cautious in looking to get long straight away 2904 another area uh, as is i would probably have this here now around 2864 and also just these lows of the days i mean the key points for me as i said 2760 uh, 2864 and 90 2963 to the downside if you want to be late to the party uh how about this area here fantastic fantastic resistance so i'm a buyer above there or i should say i'm adding to the position above there um in an ideal world it's something like that and it's something like that and then you can de-risk before we then get to those highs i mean some at 46 70 points for you know a little trade there you, you, you're taking that every day of the week uh, before you get to that high um Hopefully I didn't say high of the year there, but I meant the, the high here, 32, 33. Uh, and then, you know, you are thinking about, let's get us to the gap fill, let's get us to the all-time highs. So I think it's set up very nicely. I think it is. Uh, 29.63 is key. Um, I think there's going to be a right battle on there. I think there's going to be a right battle, and I don't think it's one where I'd have a limit order waiting to, to get long, for sure. Um, NASDAQ... Um, it's uh we're having a look here at the day got that trend line coming in which i like i said i'd have as a guide also got we've got a horizontal line drawn here at 98.18 trying to work out why i had that on um as i haven't looked at this chart since but i mean maybe just because of the the pullback to here and you can see we hit it, hit it as a good area of support. I guess it's also, you know, this area from 16th of June. Uh, I'll go back and watch my video, and see why I have it on. But I'm definitely leaving it. It's the low of, of that uh, of, the, of the Friday, and it's such a key, key level, isn't it? So below, and now looking at this, it's got to be below sort of 97, 50 below that area. Then you probably get 95, 14s coming in and. Uh, and that could well be the next opportunity to get long. I remember saying last week and in previous sessions, like when we've done the live sessions, the live webinars, for me that, you know, just looking at the NASDAQ here, it's, and it's not, you know, the most artistic trend line, trend channel in the world, but we are just going up, down, up, down, up, down. Is this now the opportunity to get stuck in? 
I mean, looking at the NASDAQ here in the futures, I mean, what an insane market. What an insane market. But as well, just bear in mind that 97.50 would also be below the previous high of the year. It would also be below that. So, yeah. Um, I think when there's still these jitters in the market, if you are looking for longs, be late. You know, wait for these support levels to break and then we come back above. You know, that false break is always a lovely, lovely opportunity, I have to say. You know, when you get that, okay, Monday we gap lower, market's pushing higher, okay, well actually we then get back above. The sellers aren't interested anymore and that's what leads to these big pushes that you see here, for example, on the 15th, which was a Monday. Uh, and then the, the 22nd was a Monday. These both gap down on the weekend, remember. The failure to continue that momentum is a great buying opportunity. So, yeah. The Dow, I mean, interestingly, the, the, the Dow is, let's just get the old percentage tool out. Um, to the low, 27% to the high, 18. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say it's sort of near enough in, in the middle, but obviously not. Um, it's the S&P and the, and the Dow look on paper incredibly appetizing for a long for me ah uh, wow I mean but you know for me saying that and as you guys know I'm, I'm, I'm bullish I'm not bullish ab uh, below there so for the for the bears you know if we can if we if you <laughs> can get us below there you know this this market probably then does drift down towards 24,000 got some nice support around these lows from the end of May 2022nd as well and, and 23,807 looks good and you know there's there's certainly opportunity for for the bears right now to get stuck in it's not a trend line because you've only got the two tests but as a guide goes it's uh, you know we are, are below there but it's wishy-washy I wouldn't really look to have that on um, yeah, I mean the Sunday close, the Sunday open is going to be very interesting, very interesting. To the upside, um, I, you know, again, the the whole idea of a, a false break is bullish, so just remember that. Um, you you got my sort of line in the sand. I'd still have that on. I'd still have that on, but looks to me. Just get that more on the, the double top from Friday and Thursday. It looks to me the 200 day moving average is worthwhile here. You can see we had some nice resistance back on the Tuesday. So I'd have it I'd have it there and uh, use that maybe as a guide. So if you want to be late, for me, above 25,681 uh, as well. But uh, if, I, I think we gap lower on the weekend. Um, and then it'll be interesting to see the open. Uh, but from a bearish point of view, if you sort of traded the European session on Monday morning, we're still, you know, got some, some strong selling pressure. You know, that's a, a good sign. Uh, but really the European eight o'clock, seven o'clock, six o'clock is where we, we've, we've been pushing higher from there. So that wouldn't be what you want to see. But a down week for equities last week, nonetheless. Gold, it's, oh, hello. Let's hit this, uh, look at that, lovely. Hit the trend line. This was, yeah, it was yesterday. I remember we've we've got our, our summer interns at the moment, and they've just uh, they finished yesterday. And there's a trader who uh, went long near the low, well near I think near enough, probably off this level, probably the twenty third, and, and got stopped to the tick in a trading competition, the lowest point yesterday, which was uh, hard to see where it's now gone. Uh, but yeah, that trend line, you got to have that on now, haven't you? And also this area, these lows, and if you draw a horizontal line, it's not far away from being on the low, the 22nd as well. And then we get a classic yes there above these highs. Wow, I mean, gold there, fantastically well respected these levels that are marked up. So still have, I'd still have all of these on. A, a, a close below the trend line is bearish. We're now above 1778, and it seems 1800 is is going to be the magnet. I guess we've just got to get through 1790, but I mean, 10 bucks between between gold friends is nothing, is it? So yeah, you've got to imagine that that comes in. When would I be sort of going back on my bullish gold um, call just then? 
and it's not an impressive call if we get anything in 100 by the way is it um but if we can get below that trend line you know then i'd, I'd be sort of panicking a bit but it is the right conditions for gold however let's put it on the daily you know we're just hitting the top of the range right what's to stop it then coming all the way back down you know people here would have said 1800s coming in 1800s coming in 1800s coming in right well until it does you know that's uh, that's not 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 correct but i i think we get it next week uh, below the trend line i think we then get the bottom of the range though so looking at that you know it's uh, it's it's a key guide and that's what technical analysis can be great for you know just telling you when your idea is wrong especially if it's an area that's been well respected oil um hits uh filled the gap didn't it on the futures fantastic opportunity to to get short people did get short and and now the momentum i would say is is, is with the the bears however let's just remove the old trend lines you can see these lows have acted as a good support you could you, you would just say you know below 3704 34.86 31.06 still the key point i mean i wouldn't change anything on this we're just in between the 41 and 37. And I remember saying last week, it's a big range. But, it, it, you know, have that on. Have that on. A daily close below 37, I think, like I said, you know, we get down to 34.50. And then below that, the bottom of the, I mean, I mean, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Really technical. Look at these resistance. Get a close above. Great opportunity there. Now we could have a couple opportunities here. Get above these resistance. Great area of support. I mean, if you wanted to get in a long, I'd, I'd rather, you know, buy lower down rather than higher up for now. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the DAX, choppy. Very choppy. Um, I probably have to now remove this, this zone. I mean, not surprising it was choppy around there, was it? I'd, yeah, I still have this on these levels from the downside. A close above 12,487 is massive. That would be absolutely massive. And if we do get a close there, then I think we get the high that we had in, in June. And then really, it's uh, you know another test of this area and it could be off to the all-time high races. But we could be talking in a couple of months and, and that is the, the highest we, we were. So equity markets are nicely set. They're all coming into just fantastic areas of support let's just re go back to the s p these circles here the nasdaq previous all-time high bottom of the trend channel dow jones previous resistance turn support dax same here technically you know this is the opportunity we wanted you know stick to your risk management uh, wait for your your triggers to to get into these markets, but you know it's a very key key get key level for the, for the bulls. But that's great for for the bears. They want to see that and they want to see it go, and then get your trigger for the sell and you can ride this. So if you're still short, you know I would have de-risked for sure before the weekend, at least a bit. Uh, but if we can get if you can get below here, this market probably could uh, could fly a bit. Um, but like I said guys, this is a Saturday, uh, it's just gone half 12, so headlines will be dropping I'm sure over the, the, the next 36 hours, so just bear that in mind when watching it. Uh, but I hope you all have a good Sunday evening, as this is when you'll be watching the video, uh, and a great week ahead, and I look forward to catching up with you all in the chat. Thank you guys, take care.